Hey, what's happening guys? I got something cool to show you today. This is a very old crystal radio kit that I received when I was 12 years old. And we're going to talk about it and how it works because a patron named Sam asked me to talk a little bit about crystal radios. And I've been wanting to do a video on this for a while, but I just haven't yet. This, by the way, was not my first crystal radio. This is my favorite one, but it's not my first. I no longer have my first crystal radio. But here's a picture of it. That's right. It was the $6 million man backpack crystal radio. And you're not going to be able to see very well, but there's a clip there that I would clip onto my bed frame. There's the antenna, would extend not near enough. And there's the earpiece, and I could listen to uh, the local AM radio station at night. It worked. So, how does a crystal radio work? Let's talk about that real quick. Here is the probably most simple form of a crystal radio. Yes, I, I know you could eliminate the tuning capacitor and you'd still have it, but you wouldn't be able to tune so we have an antenna we have our inductor we have our diode also called a detector and a variable capacitor so what we've created here is simply what's known as a tank circuit that is going to resonate and oscillate at a particular frequency that is a combination of this inductor and this capacitor they're going to take that signal, they're going to spit it out, it's going to be rectified through the diode and put out through the earphone. Now, common questions. Why use an earphone, why not a speaker? Because the electromotive force, the EMF coming through, is very, very small. Millivolts, maybe nanovolts, I mean, there is not much. It, it's not enough to drive a speaker. And then somebody says, well, couldn't we build, a, you know, millions of crystal radios and farm free power from the air? Well, it's not free power from the air. The radio stations are paying the electric companies to pump that signal out. So now you're not really farming anything for free. You're not going to get a lot out of a crystal radio. That's why they have an earpiece. But they're still fun. Um, in World War II, they were very popular among the soldiers. And the reason why it was the common radio technology of the 1940s was the super heterodyne radio. And the Germans had a way to detect the local oscillator in that radio, and they could home in on our guys. So uh, those types of radios were strictly forbidden, but they were able to build what was called a foxhole radio, which is just, you know, a, a type of a crystal radio set. Um, I'm sorry, it wasn't in, in Germany. I think it was in Italy. I don't remember. It's been so long since I learned about it. But anyway... They used the point of a pencil, you know, the graphite, against a blued razor blade. Well, when you blew the steel, it becomes magnetite. That oxide is a semiconductor. So by moving the pencil around on the surface of that blade, they could find a spot that would create the rectification. So, why do we need the capacitor? Well, we need the capacitor to tune this tank circuit. Why are we doing that? Well, yes, every radio station within range is coming through that antenna. And it's going to hit this tank circuit. And we only want one to get through. So let me give you a, a little stupid demonstration I drew here. Okay, so here is our radio spectrum. Amplitude goes up. So the higher the signal, the more power it has. Frequency goes across from the lowest to the highest. Since we're in AM, we're at 540 kilohertz to 1600 kilohertz or 1.6 megahertz and all these little specs you see here are signals the one that looks like some sort of gothic cathedral is an am signal there's your central signal and your lower and your upper side bands so back to our tank circuit what are we doing with the tank circuit well what we are doing with the tank circuit is we're basically creating what's called a bandpass filter so 
the by create by choosing the inductor size and the capacitor size where we want we are able to create a filter that's going to look something like this so here is every frequency hitting our antenna at once but now as we roll that capacitor either open or close changing the capacitance well look now we come into a signal we're not interested in that one we move along there's another one this is just mostly noise you're going to find a lot of that in am you know we move along we're moving along there's a stronger one but it's still mostly noise now, there's a big strong one that's that's probably a digital signal look at that that's in parallel looks like railroad tracks that's some sort of ham radio data signal moving over uh oh we get we're getting something here starting to sound like am we're getting that lower sideband tuning in right there there's our signal don't go too far we lose the signal come back tune it the other way this is what is known as selectivity in your radios that's your introduction now let's get into this guy yes for all you collector fanatics out there the box is shot Tune in your favorite AM stations on a radio you built yourself. Needs no batteries or alternating current. Crystal diode converts RF to audio. Fun way to learn how radios work. No soldering required. Receives 550 to 1600 kilohertz with earphone and instructions. Custom manufactured in China, which is odd back then, for Radio Shack, a division of the Tandy Corporation. So here's the manual. This is Science Fair catalog number 28, TAC 177. Now I'll go through each page here in case somebody has one of these. But they don't have the instructions. This should help out. How your crystal radio works. The schematic diagram. Parts list. Back page. So there's all the pages. And here it is. In all its 1980s glory. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Like we said, this is the diode. We're using it for rectification, detection. You cannot use a standard silicon junction diode. That 0.6 to 0.75 uh, forward voltage you need to overcome the diode drop is too much for one of these sets. So we're using an old germanium diode, and we'll measure it and I'll show you. In today's modern technology, you could probably get by with the shot key. So here is our antenna. It's just a piece of like 22, 24 gauge wire. Here's our tuning capacitor. And you can see it's just a simple radio tuning capacitor. And yes, I wired it underneath. I didn't like it wired on top. I did not think that was neat enough. I know. That goofy as crap. So, the next thing we need to know are what sorts of measurements we need on these coils here and the capacitor so that we can tune in to uh, your local AM radio stations. Because if your tank circuit here is not going to have a resonant frequency that is somewhere between 540 and 1600 kilohertz well then you're not going to pick up any am radio stations now are you fella okay so we are just about ready to give her a listen now if you look down here you can see we've got our antenna connected here and this antenna is maybe i don't know 
12 feet long got hooked up there over the door it's really not long enough for most things but hopefully there's a really strong am station out of pittsburgh in fact it was the first radio station in the united states kdka am hopefully we should be able to pick that up it's like 10 20 am so let's talk for just a minute about aerials antennas and whatnot okay so the ultimate length for your antenna is equal to the length of the of the uh the wavelength of the frequency it's not possible it's not practical but it is the best so if we're talking about our AM radio band, at the low end, 550 kilohertz, a one-to-one -one antenna would be 545.1 meters. And this is using 300,000 kilometers per second at the speed of light. If we use 299, 820 kilometers of the speed of light, which is more accurate, you know, then our, our 540 is going to equal 555.2. But <clears throat> this is close enough. And basically what I'm just trying to show you here is you're not going to have a 545 meter antenna. Even if you come all the way down here to 1600 kilohertz, you're going to have to have a 188 meter antenna. And it's just not going to work. So here are my two local stations, 1020 KDKA, which would be 294 meters, and 1340, which I think is WSTV, 224 meters. So what can we do? Well, you want it to be a multiple. So let's say we're going to try and get a KDKA here, 1020 AM. Well, 294 meters is no good. If we divide by 10, we get 29.4 meters, which is doable. And if we divide by 100, we get 2.94 meters. 3 meters nominal and you're good to go maybe i don't know give it a try this is a lot of experimentation here that is what we get a lot of experimentation unfortunately there's just not too much else we can do except try different lengths try different positionings so the next thing the ground connection what are we going to do with that? Well, it needs to go into the ground. The best thing to do would be to hammer in a, you know, six-foot copper grounding rod outside your home and connect the ground rod directly to it. If you're looking for a permanent crystal radio installation, that's fine. Most people just clamp it to a cold water pipe. What I am going to do is clip it to this which is connected to my house ground is it the smartest thing in the world oh probably not i've never been accused of being the smartest person in the room so i wouldn't worry too much about it you know all right next thing we're going to take our crystal earpiece and I'm going to try and put it up here by the phone, and we'll see what we get. Try and start dialing this in. There's one. It's not very loud, and we do not have any volume control, unfortunately. So it looks like the best one we had was just right up here at the beginning. Right there. And you'll see if I take off the ground, we lose our signal, bring the ground back, 
signals back. So I guess the last thing to really discuss then would be the safety issues. Do not put the antenna anywhere near the power line. Find out the absolute maximum length of your antenna and be 100% certain that if it falls anywhere, anytime, for any reason, it cannot land on a power line. Power lines previous to the transformer on the pole in your neighborhood are probably, well, in the U.S., 7,500 volts, 7.5 kilovolts. Not only will that destroy all the electronics in your home, it could kill you. So just, you know, do not get the aerial anywhere near power lines. The same goes for the ground. Do not connect it to anything electrical. Connect it to a cold water pipe or drive a ground rod in. Do not leave these hooked up when you are not there to supervise them. An electrical storm could bring, elect could bring lightning into your house even if the lightning strike is nowhere near your house due to induction. When we're talking hundreds of thousands to millions of amps, you simply cannot predict what's going to happen. So if you're not using it, actively using it, disconnect it, take down your aerial, take down your ground. But mostly, have fun. Kids have been building crystal radios since the 1940s. I think we're still at least that smart. Build a crystal radio, have fun. You only need a couple things. You need a germanium diode, a uh, inductor, an aerial, and a crystal radio earpiece. That is important. You can't just use a pair of headphones. You need the high impedance crystal radio headphone. So I want to thank Sam for suggesting this video. And I want to thank you right there. You got you for watching this video. Wouldn't be here without you. However, now that I am uh, no longer receiving my sponsorship from PCB Way, I could use your help. Check out the Patreon. There's a link down below. Buck a month, five bucks a month, whatever you can swing. Helps us keep the channel going. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons for supporting this channel. Big thanks to Sam for suggesting this video. That's it. I'm out. Peace.